I bought Amazon's cheapest Birkenstock alternative and their highest rated alternative to see how they compare to the real deal Birkenstocks. The reason I'm doing this video is when we did the Birkenstock video where we cut them in half and kind of went through all the different layers, I couldn't really make a judgment call if I thought they were worth it or not, or if I thought they were overpriced or even how, how high of quality they are because I didn't really have anything to compare it to. So I thought buying a cheapest alternative and maybe a higher quality alternative might give us some context and some points to go off of to really understand why Birkenstocks are priced the way they are and if they are worth the money. So the way we're gonna do this video is I went through the comments or the reviews on Amazon and pulled out the most commonly complained aspects of these two shoes and we'll use those complaints to kind of guide us through the deconstruction of these two shoes or sandals and maybe give us some talking points on differences between the cheaper ones and the real deals. But first let's talk about the shoes. So the first ones are the cheapest alternatives. These are the pep steps. And there's like a thousand different versions of these shoes, just under different names. They all look the same. They all like basically are made from the same materials, just with a different brand name on the heel. They're $17.99 and they're made in China. The next ones are the highest rated and what seem to be the best alternative to the Birkenstocks. These are the White Mountains. They're $38.99 and they're made in India. And then our regular Birkenstocks that, review, that we reviewed last time, these are the Arizona and they are $99.95 and they're made in Germany. So the first big complaint I saw in the reviews was that the buckles on the alternatives falls off really easily. And if you look at how they're attached, they've just got a little rivet holding them on. Compared to the Birkenstocks, this has almost like a little metal staple holding them together. So let's tear them off and see how easy they come off. So the pep steps, uh, the rivet tore off really easily. And if you look at the rivet, it's just made out of really thin metal compared to the White Mountains. It's a lot thicker metal, so I couldn't even get it to tear apart. And that's more like you would see in a regular rivet used in not cheap stuff. So I was glad to see that that didn't tear through as easily. And to the Birkenstocks, I was actually surprised I wasn't able to tear these out because they don't look like they're as substantial and maybe have as much of a grip as a rivet but they held up just as well as the White Mountain rivets. The next complaint in the reviews is that the pep step material on the upper tears really easily. So if we look at the little cross section of this, you can see that the majority of the material is made up of that uh, air infused polyurethane fake leather. And then there's just a thin layer of that fabric backing compared to the Birkenstocks where you've got a thinner layer of the polyurethane fake leather with a lot more substantial backing material. That's where I think the strength's gonna come from and I think that's why people are seeing the pep steps rip easily. Versus the White Mountains, this is leather with the reinforced stitching. So let's do a quick tear test and see how they hold up. The pep steps did not fare well. They, they tore surprisingly quick. And I don't even know if I got it on screen because it, it surprised me how fast they tore. Compared to the White Mountains having leather, and this is probably a top grain leather. It's not, it maybe it's a full grain. It, it's just not the best leather in the world, um, but it's okay. It surprised me how strong it actually was because sometimes cheap leather will tear just as easily as a really crappy fake leather. Then compared to the Birkenstocks, so this is similar to what we saw with the vegan Doc Martens. It really surprised me at how strong this vegan leather can be if it's built correctly. So with this really thick layer of this felted material, it's really strong and it's really tear resistant. Maybe it's not as abrasion resistant or will last as long and look as good for long, for as long, but it's surprisingly tear resistant. I couldn't even get this one to tear. So the next complaint is my personal favorite and it's on the White Mountains and it's that they make a farting noise when you walk. And uh, so let's pull this 
footbed out and kind of see what it's made out of because I don't think it's leather. So let's find out why they make a farting noise. And I tried wearing these around and I couldn't get it to make a farting noise. Maybe my feet aren't flat enough um, to make it happen, but maybe it's something to do with the, the footbed. So let's get them torn out. So the footbed on the Pep Steps is a suede leather, really similar to the Birkenstocks actually. The only difference between the two is that the Pep Steps don't have a jute layer underneath. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch the Birkenstock video. It's basically a layer of burlap to help add some strength to the cork that's fused together with the latex. And then to the farting shoes, the White Mountains. So it's not leather, it's, it's like kind of a suede fabric, kind of a microfiber fabric. So I think maybe that's where all the farts are coming from. Um, but also maybe it's just that the footbed's not as contoured, there's not as many ridges to it, so your foot kind of suctions to it more. I'm not really sure. I tried to wear them around more and had other people wear them and we couldn't get them to fart. So I don't know where the farts come from. And then to the Birkenstocks, they have the suede leather, just like we talked about earlier. And uh, now to the really interesting part, I already saw a little sneak peek of this previously, the midsole. So the big complaint I saw on Amazon was that the midsoles in the alternative versions aren't as comfortable and they crumble a lot faster. So let's see what's in the midsoles and maybe start to figure out where the differences really come from between these shoes. Every time I do one of these cut in half videos, I'm always super surprised by stuff. So starting with the pep steps. So this isn't even a cork all the way through. It's just a little layer of cork that's around the edges. And then on the inside, it's just a, like a foam with lots of little voids in it. And then the actual structure of the midsole has built in voids to cut down on the material used and to maybe make it a little bit more squishy. So super surprising there. I guess it's not too surprising for $17. And then to the farting shoes, the white mountains. So similar where there's the, the built-in voids to cut down on the material use and to make them a little bit more squishy. But what's interesting is the amount of potential cork, I don't even know if this is cork in here. It looks more like sawdust, honestly, and cork comes from trees, so it's technically sawdust anyway. But there's way more of the binding material, like the rubber or the, the plasticky material it is. There's way more of that in here than the actual cork material. Compared to the Birkenstocks, wherever they are, the majority of the Birkenstocks are cork. It's mostly dry, it doesn't have a lot of the latex in there, there's no voids in there, and it's all cork, and it's big particles of cork compared to the White Mountains. It's just little teeny flakes. Um, so, so it looks like that's where the biggest difference is in the, the three different shoes is the amount of cork, the quality of the cork, and how much material is actually in the midsole. So overall, you kind of get what you pay for. You know, if you if you want an $18 shoe, you're gonna get $18 worth of a crappy leather that's gonna break really easily and almost no cork. Versus if you want the Birkenstocks, these all look the same, you're gonna get a lot more cork. It's gonna be a lot more comfortable. The upper is gonna last a lot longer and you're just getting a higher quality shoe. And then, you know, that place in the middle at $38, you're gonna get an okay shoe. It's technically a cork midsole, but it's mostly this uh, rubber stuff, polyurethane or whatever it is, and lots of voids. So if it were me, you know, if you've got the money, buy the Birkenstocks. They're a lot better in all the ways that we tested. They're more expensive, but they're gonna last you a lot longer. And definitely stay away from the cheap Chinese pep steps or whatever other brands that these guys produce. These are gonna disappoint you. So you get what you pay for. And uh, this was really fun. This was really surprising. And I, I love doing these types of videos where it gives us a little context to what, you know, where the price in the Birkenstocks comes from. Are they still a little overpriced? Maybe, but they're definitely better than all the rest of the alternatives. So let me know what you guys think. think and uh, consider liking and subscribing and helping this channel out. It means a lot to me. And I guess we'll see you next time. See ya.